this tree out a little over a year ago, actually maybe a year ago today, and I watched so many nice deer walk by this tree that when we were done hunting, even though I wasn't going to hunt it last year, I went ahead and did the work looking up a year ahead. I've never hunted this tree, but I know they walk by it. I'm hoping that's what happens this morning. It's foggy. I'm looking forward to a week of the rut in the south. I love it down here. So I think the rut in general is kind of feast or famine in a lot of places and especially when those does start locking down. But normally there's enough bucks here that you don't see locked down or don't see it as much as you would like in Kansas or Illinois or somewhere like that. Normally here there's enough bucks that are aggravating that hot doe and the buck that's got her that they'll be bouncing what we call schooling. And so if you're not in that zone where you can see that, you can have a really slow sit this time of year. And then at the flip of a switch, it can go insane, you know, in just a matter of seconds. I think you gotta be willing to sit long hours and have some really slow days when it's at this phase of the rut, but know that the buck you're after, deer of a lifetime, could appear at any second. We are in Mississippi, about an hour south of Memphis, right on the Mississippi River. River Bend, which is where we're at, is one of the most diverse hunting areas. It's 3,800 acres right at it, but it's all different. You can get stuff that looks like Texas, stuff that looks like Kansas. You can get in thickets and persimmon groves, oaks, but it's honestly a lot of big woods, and it makes it tough to hunt if you don't know what you're looking for. I think Mississippi's cool for a number of reasons. One is when their rut falls. So, you know, we're here right now, second week of December, and we're kind of on the tail end of it. So what makes it really cool and unique is, you know, you can kind of chase that core Midwest rut through November, and then you come here and you have another incredible rut experience in December. It's also a three buck state, so there's a lot of opportunity in terms of, you know, being able to fill some tags. So I think the combination of like the late rut and the opportunity with tags makes it a really great option to extend your whitetail season. Levi has built a reputation of getting it done everywhere he goes and getting it done fast. So it's just kind of what you expect from the guy. You know, he's one of the greatest to ever do it. His skill set is as honed and sharp as anybody I've ever met or spent time with. And, you know, he repeatedly uh, reaps the rewards of that in terms of the success he has every time he steps in the woods with a bow. What's up, buddy? You made it. Welcome to Mississippi, huh? Yeah, this is Riverbend, man. This place, Way in here. The place looks incredible. Yeah, it's different. I mean, you're like two miles from a paved road, so. It's quite the driveway in. If that's what you want to call yeah. it. It's more like a four-wheeling trail, but it helps keep people out of here for sure. Dealing with a little bad weather coming, but I mean, it's the rut. Anything can happen. incredible deer this deer you guys have around here is nothing to shake a stick at no for sure i mean you're probably not going to shoot a 200 but there's like that 140 to 170 range this river's got them in it you know um it's just a special place just a real high density of bucks we're going to see some rain hope you brought rain gear but... brought some rain gear <laughs> that's good that's good it's going to be wet but hopefully we can get on a big deer somebody should The ability to share camp with Levi and his brother and you know some of his longtime friends, it's 
It's hard to describe. I mean, at Levi's core, he's just a great human being, you know, and I've kind of thought that since the first time I met him. You know, we've had a relationship for a number of years now, and somebody like Levi, who's at the absolute top of his game, the best archer in the world, some would say the best hunter in the world. And don't get any more dead in your net. Really wants to, you know, share in his success, really wants to continue to build relationships and you know have the type of community that he surrounded himself with and in these hunting camps and in life and getting the opportunity to share a hunting camp with him here in Mississippi in December. It's a great experience and it's one of the coolest things I get to do in my position with First Light is build those relationships and share these experiences with people like we like. So Mississippi in general, I think you get three buck tags, and I'm not even sure on the does, um, but it's quite a few does. And so it's a pretty lenient tag system as far as you can kill a lot of deer in the state of Mississippi. It's a very high population of whitetail, especially when you get close to this river. A lot of bucks, a lot of mature deer. And a lot of these clubs like Riverbend that are behind the levee have a great management program. They understand the genetics and the potential that are here. So like Riverbend, we don't shoot a deer that's not five and a half, so it's pretty strict rules here. And the cool thing about this place is everybody's kind of on board and they're invested in their individual future here and the club's future. And honestly, there's enough mature deer, five and a half year old plus deer here that you don't have to stress over passing a really big four year old. One of my really good friends, Andy Morgan, uh, has been a member here for a long time. And uh, he brought me here as a guest four or five years ago. And he always talked about this place and he'd call me, send me pictures of the deer he's hunting and I'm just like, holy smokes. And I kind of fell in love with the Mississippi River Delta and Louisiana, Arkansas, this whole river bottom like 12 years ago, I started hunting down here. So I really knew how good this river bottom can be. And so when he brought me down as a guest, I shot a deer like second sit with him that year and fell in love with Riverbend. And uh, then when he called me, I think maybe the next year and said there was possibly an opening for another member, he knew he didn't even have to ask, but I was, I was on board for sure. And I fell in love with it more every time I come here. So I was blessed to have really good guys that had hunted here for a long time in this terrain. And I grew up hunting the south, but even where I grew up is different than here. And honestly, it's overwhelming when you come to a place like this. It's big woods and a lot of ground, and you can just totally spin your wheels trying to figure out where to go. So I had to like take specific areas, like the first year, a small place, and just kind of break it down and learn how the deer use it. The more I did that, the more I learned how they would use any other place I'd look at that was similar here. It's totally different than anywhere you'll ever go in that aspect. And I think it's because when this river gets out and the water gets in here, they have to run that high ground a lot and they just naturally do that even when the water's not in. It's a little different, but once you learn it, it sure is fun to hunt. That's kind of the name of the game this, this time of year. It was a pinch point, just a you know textbook rut spot, bottleneck between two big fields. Uh, I knew anything that wanted to go from the north to the east uh, was gonna have to come by us.
we shot that buck right after daylight. The first arrow my knock didn't come on and I had no idea where I hit him. I looked low and he, so he ran and stopped and his doe come back by us. He bedded back down or he bedded down, got up, bedded again. I seen it broke that offside shoulder. first shot and it looks like heart I mean he's just dumping blood so I got a feeling he's probably that last run when I shot the second time he probably ran over here and died but uh, we're still gonna take it real slow he's on blood hopefully he's laying over here he's a giant eight point second time he bedded in this scraper. I don't know if that was, that's my first one. Yeah, that's good blood. Boy, I didn't take that, but I'm sure glad about it. been a long rut, but we've got a giant on the ground now. Holy smokes. Oh, here's my arrow broke off. Yeah, let stay there. Man, I've, never, I've got so many pictures of this deer. Holy smokes, y'all. Well, that's a big Mississippi eight point right there. Man, I was getting worried. I didn't know what the heck was going on, but he poured the blood the whole way. Been a good morning. Hunting in the South has definitely further educated me in terms of what I need to build product for whitetail hunters. Sometimes whitetail hunters kind of get clumped into this very small or narrow category of Midwest whitetail hunting. And while that is, you know, the heartland is a place, a great place to hunt whitetails, there's so many other incredible places like Mississippi, for example, where the rut conditions and hunt conditions are just different, right? The Temperatures that you know somebody's going to experience hunting whitetails in Mississippi in December is very different than somebody might be you know who's hunting whitetails in northern Minnesota in November. It's just a different set of conditions, both temperature-wise, but also just you know the habitat that these critters live in, and those different sets of conditions really make necessary different types of gear. When somebody spends as much time in a tree chasing whitetails and other critters, you know, as Levi does, you know, that guy's got more days in the tree in the last month than probably most people have their entire season. So the level of expertise that that guy has when it comes to chasing mature whitetails and being successful, no rock goes unturned in terms of how he hunts and his skill set. And I think that also is true of his ability to provide feedback on products. So, you know, when somebody as good as he is and as smart as he is speaks and gives feedback, I definitely listen. The rut is special. It can be frustrating, feast or famine. Really hard to pin down a specific buck, but after all that, it's still my favorite time of year to be in the woods hunting whitetail. Mississippi River whitetail. And uh, the rut claims another one.